Conservation practice number five pertains to the need for safe water disposal from crop fields, and it applies to class one, class two, three, and four land. The key for needing a grass waterway, mechanical drain, or other safe water disposal system is where you have an area of concentrated water flow. Now that can be anything from a well-defined gully like we see here in this picture, to a more subtle concave shaped area where water is simply going to concentrate over time. And without a well-established sod, it's going to continue eating away at the land surface and lose valuable soil through erosion via concentrated water flow. Now click on the next slide and see an example of a grass waterway installation and final product. The slide on the left shows the recent installation of a grass waterway practice. Notice the area of concentrated water flow and it looks like about 15 foot width on either side of that area. Seed has been sown and seeds usually fescue with a little annual ryegrass or wheat mixed in for quick germination and establishment along with a straw blanket that's been tacked in with pins and placed on top of the seed to help hold it in place until it gets enough moisture to germinate and begin growing. The picture on the right shows a well-established grass waterway that's doing a great job keeping a gully from forming in that slightly concave area of concentrated water flow as indicated by the red arrow. The diversion has a lot of similarities to practice number five, grass waterway, mechanical drain, or other safe water disposal system. They both involve having a well-established grass sod. They both have a concave shape, and they both involve moving water safely from point A to point B. The difference is that in land judging competition, a diversion is needed only when the site you are judging is a bottomland or floodplain site. That, ha that has higher elevation sloping ground above it. And the purpose of the diversion is to capture runoff from the sloping land and diverting it away from the bottomland or the floodplain area, thus keeping the productive bottomland soil from eroding. After you look at this slide and digest it for just a second, click on the next slide to see a closer up view of just how a diversion works. In this slide, we notice a diversion is strategically located at the interface of where the sloping hillside and the flat floodplain or the bottomland area meet. It's located specifically here to capture or to pick up the water from the hillside before getting to the bottomland and diverting it safely away to a nearby drainage ditch instead of running across the productive bottomland soils. It is recommended that a diversion is seeded to a permanent sod. Therefore, grass waterway or practice number five is also always checked any time a diversion or practice seven is checked. Aeration and drainage class is determined by the depth to gray color in the soil profile. This slide hopefully helps to illustrate how color is used to interpret aeration and drainage. The slide on the right shows a dominant gray matrix color that is the result of the soil being saturated for a significant period of time throughout the year. The iron in soils that are waterlogged or saturated for prolonged periods becomes mobile and it leaches out through the soil profile leaving behind the gray color that's characteristic of poor drainage conditions. On the other hand, notice that the soil on the left is brown in color. This is characteristic of a well-drained soil. The soil is brown because the iron in the soil is in an oxidized state. Perhaps this can be best understood by thinking about a 30-penny nail that you might lay out on the picnic table for about a month and let it rain on it two or three times. When you come back and look at it three weeks later you'll notice that the gray nail now has some reddish brown colors on it. 
that reddish brown color is rust, iron that's in an oxidized form, Fe2O3. Soils that are brown or reddish brown in color have rust, if you will, oxidized iron painted on the soil particles. And the brown color is indicative of well-drained conditions. This slide illustrates the four drainage classes that we recognize in Kentucky land judging competition. The soil profile on the far left is brown throughout the profile. Since it doesn't contain any gray color within 30 inches of the surface, it is considered a well-drained soil. The next profile picture to the right shows gray color appearing about where the dash line occurs and that's about 24 to 26 inches below the soil surface. Soils that contain gray color in a profile between 20 and 30 inch depth are considered moderately well drained. The next soil profile picture, the third one from the left, is brown to about 14, 15 inches, at which point we then begin to see gray color appear. Gray color that occurs between 10 and 20 inch depth is characteristic of a somewhat poorly drained soil. Finally, when you look at the soil profile picture to the far right, we see it has gray color all the way up to the surface. Gray color that occurs within 10 inches of the soil surface is indicative of a poorly drained soil. Now, one thing to note about gray colors that appear only within the topsoil layer, and you do not see the gray immediately below the topsoil. This is characteristic of compaction and is not considered a drainage model or a drainage problem. Therefore, as we sometimes will say, ignore any gray colors that appear solely or only within the topsoil layer. Drainage tile or open ditch is a practice recommended for soils that are either poorly or somewhat poorly drained and they must occur on A or B slopes. Now notice that the word is and and not or. Both criteria must be met for this practice to be recommended. The soils must be poorly or somewhat poorly drained and they must occur on A or B slopes. There's two general ways that drainage tile is installed. One is the more common practice way we see it done today is we see in the upper left image uh, with a tile plow, that's the yellow uh, piece of equipment mounted on a three point hitch behind the tractor. Or as we see in the upper right, which was a much more common practice 30 or 40 years ago, that's a picture of a commercial tiling machine. And what's going on here is three to four inch, three or four inch is a rule of thumb, a uh, corrugated drain pipe is plowed in, if you will, three to four foot below the surface, generally on 30 to 50 foot center line spacing, depending on soil type. And this corrugated drain pipe has narrow holes or slits in it that allows the water to filter through the profile into the pipe. And this allows, as we see in the lower right picture, the safe removal of excess water from the wet soil and deposit it into a nearby drainage ditch. And the net result of this practice is that it provides, as we see in the lower left slide, a more favorable rooting environment with more oxygen for plants and it allows farmers to get into these otherwise wet fields and plant them earlier in the spring, thus increasing yield potential for crops such as corn in particular.